I feel like my podcast is going in the right direction. I got people with panties in a wad. All right, let's talk about a really freaking insane interception from Justin Reed at a recent practice. Tyreek Hill doing a football camp yesterday in Wichita, Kansas. Orlando Brown finally getting an agent that has zero NFL negotiating experience and much more. But first, how about those? Oh, those cheese. Actually, I'm watching them right now, man. Shout out to Cheese. Shout out KC. I'm about to show y'all a route and why I could be a future Kansas City receiver. What's up, guys? My name is Cole, and I do daily news about the Chiefs and the NFL overall, so I'm going to need you to sub if you're new. Hit that like button if you think the word Chiefs is always supposed to go after the words how about those, and let's get into this news, starting with this little bit of player news featuring Travis Kelsey, where he can be seen with a cigar and a peace sign back at it with his best friend, Patrick Mahomes, albeit not on the football field at practice or OTAs, but on the golf course in Hawaii. Not sure what they're out there for. Maybe it's to train for their next upcoming golf tournament that's in Nevada. Nevada, Nevada, on July 8th, or maybe it's because they are rich and can literally afford to do anything they want in life. Either way, sounds like a good old time to me. And then yesterday was Chiefs legend Emmett Thomas's birthday. He turned 79, I believe, and so happy freaking birthday to this young-ish man. Thomas made the Chiefs team as a UDFA and played for the Chiefs from 1966 to 1978. He finished his career with 58 interceptions, five of them being returned for TDs, so you do love to see that. Those 58 INTs, by the way, are a franchise record, and he played in 181 career games before hanging up the helmet and then went on to have a very extensive coaching career over the years, coaching for teams like the Redskins, Eagles, Packers, Vikings, Falcons, and then Coming back full circle to end his coaching career with the Chiefs, he was their defensive backs coach from 2010 to 2018 before announcing his retirement on February 12th of 2019. And I wish he would have held on for one more year there to go win a Super Bowl. But regardless, he had a great and very successful NFL career. And if you add up how long he was in the league between playing and coaching, he was a part of it for 52 years, which is insane. So happy birthday, you legend. And then Tyreek Hill was in Wichita, Kansas on Friday, yes, yesterday, hosting his youth football camp at the Stryker Sports Complex. This camp focused on lectures, fundamental skill stations, contests, and awards. Hill said his main goal is to have fun. Even though he's not a member of the Chiefs anymore, Hill said he wanted to give back to the communities in Kansas. Tyreek himself said, I mean, this is where it all started, right? I feel like I'm still here, my heart is still here, the fans are still here, so I'm always going to do my best to come back to KC because these are the guys who had my back when it was hard for me. And while he is now with the Dolphins, he did say, I'm definitely going to miss that arrowhead noise, and I did appreciate to hear these comments because he definitely will be missed, but I'll just say this about the kids camp in Wichita. I'm sure this was more than likely scheduled and locked in before he was traded to the Dolphins, but hey, either way, I appreciate him being there and his response. He was also asked about that weird podcast teaser thing that dropped recently that we talked about the other day on this channel, and the snippet seemed to indicate some potentially suspect stuff about the Chiefs, and he was asked about that and responded at this camp in Wichita. Like, it was just a question. You know, my co-host, Julius Collins, posed the question to me, and, you know, um, as you've seen on the clip, I didn't even answer the, clip, answer the question. I, I just feel like, for my podcast, I feel like my podcast is going in the right direction. I got people, you know, panty, panties in a wad, you know, so I, I feel very comfortable with that. Well, Tyreek, I'm glad you enjoy getting everyone's panties in a wad and you feel like that clickbait little video which seems to shed a bad light on the Chiefs organization is taking your podcast quote in the right direction. The podcast released another snippet as well where he talked about how he loved playing with Kelsey and Mahomes and said he had no complaints about his time in KC but it was great man everything inside the building was great you know so now I I, I have no complaints. I need I need you to be candid. I need honesty from you or Drew. Because if it was so great, what happened to last year? So now we sitting in Miami. I mean, Drew, you want to answer that first, or you want me to get into it? Because I got to kind of I kind of line up questions they need answers. So yeah, they continue to drop little teasers, and we'll have to tune in on June 10th to hear the full piece 
in its entirety, and you best believe I will be doing that. And then the Chiefs released a couple of video clips that require our attention. The first clip was titled, When Patrick's Away, Chad Will Play, and shows Chad Henney connecting nicely with wide receiver Omar Bayless. And honestly, this was a beautifully freaking thrown ball. And it's funny too, he looks back all smiles like, did you see that one, Patrick? Oh, wait. You weren't here because you're in Hawaii golfing, you rich little boy. Seriously though, not bad at all for a QB that turns the ancient age, in the NFL at least, of 37 on July 2nd. You love to see that. Well, Justin Reed, who was guarding Omar Bayless in that first clip, gets his revenge in the second clip as he goes airborne, like defies gravity almost to snag this ball out of the stratosphere. I mean, What a freaking grab. This man is basically Spider-Man in the flesh. I also love how at the end of this clip, he dabs up Juan Thornhill like, what's up, man? I'm excited to see stuff like this happen in the regular season. I don't know about y'all. And then I also wanted to make note of the new Madden 23 cover that was recently revealed because it featured the late John Madden himself on the cover. And this is the first time he's been on the actual cover of Madden since Madden 2000. And I'm really happy they did this. Nobody else deserved to be on the cover this year and while there's a lot of more important things you can do to honor somebody's life and legacy this is one of those things that was essential and hits home for me i spent a lot of my childhood playing madden through the years whooping my dad and my brothers in madden literally every single game went undefeated i'm just kidding obviously i've lost like one or two games in madden before but i do love to see john madden himself on the cover of his own game rest in peace and speaking of things i love Here's a video of the Broncos' new beloved QB, Russell Wilson, awkwardly yelling, let's ride, into the camera. Let's ride. Let's ride. Broncos. Let's ride. Broncos country, let's ride. Let's ride. Let's ride. Broncos country, let's ride. <laughs> yeah, he was definitely roasted repeatedly for this on Twitter, like a marshmallow over a campfire. So that was pretty fun. All right, guys. Important news here, after all this time, I finally have something worth sharing. All the waiting, late nights unable to sleep due to stress, thoughts, prayers, and meditation has finally reaped its rewards because Orlando Brown Jr. finally has an agent. He will now be represented by Delta Sports Group, and they must be legit because their Twitter page has no profile pic, no header photo, zero tweets, and 39 whole followers. Looks like uh, DSG Athletics was founded way back in December of 2021 and doesn't have any prior relationships or friendships with any GMs in the NFL. In fact, his agent that he chose, Michael Portner, has never done a deal for the NFL before. Yes, you heard that correct. This is his first NFL contract. And Brown looked at that as a positive. He seemed to want someone that isn't connected, is basically brand new at this, and has zero idea what they are doing. I guess he thinks that will possibly help him become the highest paid left tackle in the NFL. Here's what Brown himself had to say about all this per his brand new, literally founded agency's release. At this point in my life, I realized that my career is bigger than the next football contract. Michael stood out to me because we relate to each other on a personal level. From an early age, we were both exposed to the negative effects of diabetes. His father is a nephrologist in the Mississippi Delta. My father died of diabetic ketoacidosis and my younger brother has diabetes. Our common view on these types of real world issues will result in meaningful work in our home communities. I am excited for this next chapter of life with Michael. So yeah, all of my trolling aside here about Michael's lack of experience, this is pretty cool. I know Orlando's dad meant a heck of a lot to him, and so this was more than likely a very big deal to be able to connect on that level. So they now have until July 15th to get a deal done, or Orlando Brown Jr. will more than likely be playing on the franchise tag. And honestly, I'm fine with him playing on the franchise tag if they can't work out a deal that the Chiefs are happy with. And there's been some comments on my videos saying, well, yeah, but if you keep Orlando Brown on the franchise tag, he then becomes paid like eighth, ninth highest left tackle in the entire NFL. Well, yeah, but it's only for one year, not for four, five, six years. If the Chiefs don't think he's the long-term solution, that's why the franchise tag works for me. It's just one year. There's also been mention of me downplaying Orlando's true skill and ability, mentioning the number of sacks he's allowed in his NFL career being very low. I think according to this site, it's five sacks, I believe, in his entire career, but 
He played left tackle for running back Lamar Jackson for three years, guys. Defenses played that guy very differently because of his ability to run around them in circles. And Mahomes is also very good. I mean, underratedly good at not taking sacks. I mean, he often scrambles out of the pocket to extend plays. Let's look at the Super Bowl, for example, against the Bucks. He was pressured a Super Bowl record of 29 times when our offensive linemen were literally volunteers from the Walmart parking lot. He was hit eight times, ran 468 yards sideways to avoid the pass rush, and was only sacked three times. So obviously then we didn't have Orlando Brown Jr. yet, but what I'm saying is this, stats are not everything, okay? The two QBs he has played with are very good at avoiding the sacks. Very, very good. Anyway, I digress on that. I'm just saying, before the Chiefs pay him more than any other left tackle in the NFL, it's worth considering multiple factors like this before doing so. Trust me. Trust the beard. I'm in my basement. Let's get it done. If he gets paid top 10 tackle money, so be it. And that sounds just fine to me. He is a good left tackle, just not the greatest in the world. What do you guys think about all this? Do you agree with my take here? What do you think about Orlando Brown and his agent basically having no experience? Will this help him get a big contract or will the inexperience hurt him and his chances to get paid a freaking boatload of cash? Definitely let me know your thoughts on this in the comments down below. It's definitely an interesting situation. And from here, let's take a look at some of my favorite comments from yesterday, starting with this one from one crazy eight. And he says this in reference to me saying Mahomes carried Allen in their recent golf match. Please, Mahomes didn't carry anyone. Get off his jock. Listen, bud, you must have eaten a lot of paint chips as a child because Josh Allen himself said he was carried hard by Mahomes. So get out of here with that nonsense, you slimy little weasel. The crypt keeper said, wasted too much time on the golf match. Well, man, I put chapter markers in all my videos, so if you do not enjoy a segment, just skip ahead, you whiny little baby, and appreciate the fact that I spend hours a day on these videos, even for ungrateful people like you. Aaron Van Horn sent in a $5 super thanks saying, been tuning in for about a month and I absolutely love the content you beautiful bearded warlock keep up the awesome work I never really give out thanks but this channel freaking rocks so hard that we got to boost you up in the algorithm some more my guy shout out from the capital of Cali aka city of trees chiefs kingdom is alive and well out here let's go let's freaking go how about those chiefs well dude thank you for the super thanks and the awesome comment you are the freaking man, and I appreciate you. Randall Robbins says, Cole, this is one of my favorite features of your Chiefs coverage. I'm glad that I didn't have to listen to nearly an hour of press conference. Yeah, and you can't hear the reporters because even after all this time and all the money the Chiefs have, they refuse to hand the reporters a mic so we can hear what the heck they're saying. So whatever about that one, but thank you. I'm glad you enjoyed. In spite of all that, it was packed full of content, but I still had people commenting on my video saying it was too long. I don't know how to make yesterday's video shorter. I cut out answering comments. There was just so much to unpack from all these coaches that I had to do it. So it is what it is. I do apologize. Levante Flower says, Cole is a Chiefs Jedi and your red beard is the force. Love your channel. Keep up the good work. Let's go Chiefs. I appreciate it. Same Bank says, I found this channel randomly. It is really a channel that produces quality content. I'm so glad this channel is growing so well. Great to see a channel get the recognition they deserve. I live in Israel and I am a huge Chiefs fan. By far, this is my favorite. Keep up the good work, man. Well, dude, Israel, I appreciate that a ton, man. I've been there before. I saw some interesting sights and I also got attacked, which is a story for another day. I'm obviously alive and still here to tell the story, but it was really crazy. We had to lock ourselves in a church and call the Israeli police and wait for them to come and save us. I'm not joking either. Very wild times. I've also been over in Palestine. We uh, drove through and there were signs that said, basically, Americans enter at their own risk. But I went over there, great people, great food, and great times. Anyway, let's move on. But that was a crazy time over there in Israel. Steve Atkins says, Cole, I can't get a word in inchwise. Go to decaf, great job. Well, for that, I do apologize. But let me say this, Steve. I will never switch to decaf. That's an insane idea. Never suggest it again. Paul Lawrence says, I would have liked... One of the reporters asking Spags why Willie Gay was pulled on third downs in favor of Neiman or Sorensen. Yeah, I do agree to an extent, but they're all gone now. 
Hitchens as well. So I think the question will definitely need to get asked if they still are not out on the field during third down situations 100%. Chuck Shepard says, oh, wise bearded sage (laughs) of all things chiefs. Bro, these nicknames are getting wild out here. I did spring cleaning yesterday. I unsubbed from three chiefs channels. Don't need them anymore. Just cluttering up my subscriptions list. Well, hey, I'm really glad that I made the cut. I appreciate that. And he did say one of the channels he unsubscribed from is Chat Sports. And since their name came up, I'm just going to go ahead and say this. Chat Sports did something recently that makes them look like certified bums. They straight up copied a recent thumbnail of mine, which to be honest, isn't that big a deal in the grand scheme of life because it's not like this concept that I used in this thumbnail has not been used before. But For one, I'm petty, and two, it's lazy, and in my opinion, lacks respect. So, if you hear this chat sports, Chiefs report, y'all got lazy on that one, you little ding-dongs. Here's the thumbnail in which I used a silhouette figure to hide who the Chiefs secret weapon was that was listed in an article I referenced. So, they literally took this idea and the verbiage and used it on their own thumbnail just a few days later, and to be honest, I gave them the benefit of the doubt at first, thinking this must be a crazy coincidence. They've probably done something like this before in the past. So I then proceeded to go through every freaking thumbnail that Chiefs Report has ever used since they started their cute little channel, and nope, they've never done anything like that before. I even went ahead, because I love to do this stuff, and commented on their video simply saying, nice thumbnail, to which they replied saying, thanks, which is even funnier because it shows How big of a conglomerate chat sports is? The person who made the thumbnail is not the person who responds to the videos and is probably not the person who even posts the videos and is definitely not Harrison Graham and so on and so forth. So hey, no real hard feelings here, chat sports. Just don't be lazy and cherry pick off the hard work of others and I won't call you out. Last thing here, and I say this humbly, but I'll see y'all soon when I pass you in subs and take that number one spot for Chiefs news outside of the actual Chiefs news channel itself. And let me be clear here. If any of y'all watch Chiefs Report, I have zero issues with that and basically zero issues with them. I don't mind Harrison and he seems like a good dude, but just know that nobody on this channel is safe from me. I'll take shots at anyone, anywhere, anytime, because I'm here for all the freaking smoke. So let's freaking go. My cold brew has got me buzzing, baby. Make sure to leave a comment below to potentially be featured in an upcoming video. Sub for more daily news like this and then check out this video here from Chiefs Report themselves, which is the video where they ripped my thumbnail idea Go ahead, comment on there, how about those Chiefs? And until next time, let's go, let's go. How about those Chiefs?